In this eight-part series, I discuss problems common to philosophy and to religion. My focus is our struggle with nihilism, the fear that our lives and the world itself may be meaningless. In this first part, I ask, what is religion? What is philosophy? And what is nihilism? What is religion? We anchor an orientation to life in a vision of the world. As our beliefs become more comprehensive, the contrast between orientation and vision ceases to make sense. We commit our lives in a particular direction, although we never have, for such an inescapable commitment, adequate grounds. We deal with our greatest terrors and our highest hopes. In the beginning, these terrors and hopes had to do with our dependence on nature. Then, as we built our civilizations, the emphasis shifted to the defects in human existence. As we are doomed to die, we hope for eternal life. As we are unable to grasp the nature of ultimate reality or our place within it, we hope to dispel the mystery and to relieve our existence of its dreamlike character. As we are bound to a wheel of insatiable desire and seek the infinite from the finite, we hope for an object of our desires that would be worthy because it would be infinite. A new moment in the history of religion will begin when we resist the temptation to persuade ourselves that everything is all right and affirm on the basis of a recognition of the incorrigible flaws in human existence, our determination to increase our share in the attributes that we ascribe to divinity. What is philosophy? In the past, philosophy has often been a would-be super science in the service of self-help. Then it has sometimes become a thought police. Neither thought police nor super science. The better work of philosophy is to serve as the instrument of the mind at war, testing the limits of our capacity for insight and insisting on our prerogative to deal with the things that matter most. Immanuel Kant described them in the form of three questions. What can I know? What should I do? For what can I hope? It is by this third question that philosophy most directly connects with religion and with politics. In philosophy so understood, we rebel against the constraints imposed by the methods and the presuppositions of all particular areas of inquiry and of discourse. Yet we renounce the claim to a super science. The renunciation of the pretense of foundational knowledge may seem to contradict the determination 
to rebel. Nevertheless, this combination of limits and of powers exemplifies a fundamental attribute of our humanity. We are situated in particular contexts of thought, culture, and society. They form us. They make us who we are. But there is more in us than there is in them. What is nihilism? We are unable to grasp the solution to the enigma of the reality of the world and of the nature of human existence. The certainty of death lends weight to this groundlessness. Our groundlessness, experienced in the perspective of our mortality, is nihilism. Nihilism threatens to overwhelm our engagements and connections by denying them a foothold outside ourselves. Nevertheless, nihilism is more than a threat. It is also a promise. Our struggle with nihilism may expunge from our ideas and ideals the taint of illusion if it does not destroy them. We risk nihilism for the sake of insight and achieve through insight a greater life.